We saying that, man, we don't need the police to be in all our fucking business and shit like that. We can police ourselves. What the fuck is up with these niggas? But what if the police would have just randomly seen these niggas in this high-profile area and before they even got out the goddamn car to go hit the motherfucking house with the brick, they would have just randomly stopped them and frisked them motherfuckers. Let's say the situation went the worst way where they actually got in and they killed Chief Keith. Let's go further down the road. The niggas that killed XXX Tentacion. What if the police would have randomly pulled them motherfuckers over just because they looked like some niggas? We had the same situation happen with the little, the little black boy that was riding with the old white lady. They randomly pulled him over because something didn't look right. What are we showing in this situation? We're showing if something don't look right, you better check it out because you're probably saving a nigga life. Go fearless leader of AO Nation, and this is y'all know what to do. Look here, um, we need to like Chief Keith or just niggas in the street, like all we hey y'all, I get because I feel like y'all doing something y'all ain't supposed to, dog. To my not my real street niggas, know what I'm saying? Chief Keith was just saved by the police. Some niggas, real gangster niggas, just came to the house. They bust the window open. They 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 bust the window out with a fucking brick, which means they wasn't like fuck the alarm system, fuck up a nigga hear us, like fuck that shit. And that, what that tells me is, let me tell you what happened. Hey, yo, Nation, look. The second stop in the Big Face Podcast Alabama tour is going to be Tuskegee, Alabama. On October 6th, I will be on Highway 29 at Macon Motel. From 12 to 5, I'm going to be out there holding the giveaways. Just really making it understood that I'm not the internet niggas. Um, I really talk minds outside. You know what I'm saying? If you want to get your uniform before the date, you already know where to go. Hit the link. Your shirt's going for 20, your snapback's going for 25. Um, also, remember that if you want to donate and shit like that, it's a whole different PayPal, but that PayPal is always in the description box. You know what I'm saying? Um, all my rap niggas, I told y'all at the end of September, I'm going to open the gates back up and we're going to start promoting again. You have to have at least a $200 budget. Prices start at $200. If you do not have $200, do not contact me. If you hit me up, Talking that business shit and that fucking talk don't end no more fucking transaction, my nigga, you blocked. Period. If you don't have two hundred dollars, this goes for business owners. If you have a product that you want me to promote on the show, you fucking me up. <laughs> and you don't got two hundred dollars, man. Don't fuck up our relationship like that, cause I'm gonna block you. You know what I'm saying? Two hundred dollars, just like that. This simple. We can do it like that. Um, if you rap niggas, get in my inbox one more time. Send me a motherfucking video. I'm blocking you. If you want me to listen to your music, it's a $50 charge. If you're not cool with the $50 charge for me to listen to your music, continue doing what you've been doing. You know what I'm saying? Begging your people to watch the shit for free. And they won't even watch it. So please don't put that fucking burden on me, dog. Get this shit together, be home. Niggas came... Three niggas came to the house, bust out the window with a brick and shit like that. Um... Some police that were in the neighborhood because there's been a rash of burglars in that fucking neighborhood. Motherfuckers trying to find Chief Keith's house. Chief Keith house. Um, and didn't find it. These motherfuckers found out they got enough intel. They found out where his fucking house was. And they figured this would be an easy lick because Chief Keith is bound by the street law of you have to handle whatever happens yourself. You can't go to the police or else you kill your whole career. The way you make money is over. But you can't have guns at your house because you know the police ain't on your side. At any point in time, they can come in this motherfucker and you'll go to prison for having anything that you can protect yourself with. You can't trust anybody, so you can't really hire 
You know what I'm saying? Security because that also goes against the, the rules that you're bound by. So really, this is for any, you know what I'm saying, rapper. This is why it's so easy to kill a rapper. Because you're bound by the law that you can't protect yourself. This is the, the judicial system. The law doesn't allow you to have any weapons because nine times out of ten you're a felon in those cases and shit like that. It's hard for you to get a weapon depending on where the fuck you at. Um, nine times out of ten you're on some type of probation. A lot of artists, some like they don't get on probation. You'll see motherfuckers get in more trouble after they get their deal, after they get their money, then they go to jail. You know what I'm saying? And that's how they get put on probation because money can get you out of jail time, but then you get a real stiff probation, i.e. Meek Mill or anybody fucking else. Um, with that being the case, a real gangster nigga understands this, but also a real gangster nigga got his ear to the street to know whether a nigga's a real gangster or not anyway. A nigga can also watch what a retarded motherfucker do right here on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever the fuck. A nigga's gonna, that's another, that's another law that a rapper, a gangster rapper is bound by. You have to show the people that you getting money. Like, if I tell artists, you know what I'm saying, like, um, as they come to me for promotion and shit like that, I tell them, you have to show these people like you have to like you have to have a direct line to the people there's no way in this in this climate right now you're gonna have to show these motherfuckers that you, you know what i'm saying doing something they have to be able to see you constantly because it's too many motherfuckers coming out for you to be in the background playing like yeah i'm just a cool motherfucker it doesn't work like that you got if you don't got no money you got to put out a whole bunch of content which will be songs freestyles uh, blogs and shit like that. You have to do that if you don't have the money to just show your jewelry, show you at the club flexing and shit like that, showing your new car. But whatever the fuck it is, you have to show these motherfuckers constantly what you got going on or you fade away into oblivion. And that's just the climate we in. So that shit works for everybody but the artists. It works for the music, like it works for the, the, the record label because, you know what I'm saying, the more you make, the more they make. It works for the police because... You're showing your every fucking move, so now these become the you non know saying fucking tracking device that they need in their own fucking surveillance. This is a criminal body cam, as I've been told y'all. And it works for the fucking real gangsters because if they want to put some on your ass, if they want to lay on you, then it's extremely easy to do because they can see not only where you at at whatever time, they can see how much you got on you, who you got with you. Niggas with the right type of intel would know when to go and when not to go because they can tell by the niggas you got around you. The people in Alabama might not know uh, the real gangster niggas from Chicago, but the niggas from Chicago know if you got this nigga, that nigga, like Tato and some other, you know what I'm saying, off the wall ass nigga with you, oh, them niggas ain't gonna do shit. Them niggas gonna lay the fuck down. They gonna lay the fuck down. I don't give a fuck if they do got a gun on them. Them niggas ain't gonna use that motherfucker for shit. Them niggas is real fucking hoes. And a nigga with the right intel will know that. So, and you have to know that. And that's why a rapper would go insane or just go off the grid and you'll find them falling off because they're like, fuck this shit. I can't win because I'm street enough to know that I can't have no gun and I know the streets know that I can't have no goddamn weapon because if I put this shit on camera, they're gonna do me like they did Kodak Black. But I gotta be on this motherfucker because all of my rivals, all of my contemporary ex are doing this shit. Like, they doing this shit and they showing what the fuck, they showing themselves at the casino, at the club, they flexing hard, they at the concert going ham. That's another fucking thing. Now motherfuckers know when you at the goddamn concert. They know every fucking thing. And you have to show them. And that's, that's what the fuck I'm saying. That's more of the fucking trap. This shit is not built for a nigga to win. This shit is built for a nigga to lose his life and his freedom. It's not no real win. but And you have to come up as a nigga. You have to come up through the gangster rap circuit. I told you, you can't go straight to fucking pop as a nigga. And that just make me mad at these fucking faggots like Takashi 6 9 Lil Blurry, um, uh, Lil Pump, Lil any fucking body, man. They got this, this other nigga, uh, Majin Buu nigga. Whatever the fuck, little boo, whatever the fuck his name is. A Dragon Ball Z character can now do music. 
Go look at this nigga uh, Majin Buu on fucking Vlad TV. They go that goddamn fly. God damn it. You can't win. This shit is not built for you to win, though. You know what I'm saying? But them niggas can win because they can be pussies because they got... The, like, Cardi B doesn't have to have this issue. You know what I'm saying? We were surprised when we saw Kim Kardashian get robbed and shit like that because this is not their issue. But niggas be getting fucked up. Like, the niggas who got a talk, like, Shy Glizzy. Like, nigga, you not built like that, but you had to put that on like that, you know what I'm saying? Because you know that you not going to get, you can't come out and do the song he just did. He just did a song with some type of R&B group or some shit like that. But he couldn't have came out like that. You'll get slapped the fuck down for that. You know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't going for that that R&B bullshit, you know what I'm saying, as you first come out. You got to come out on some gangsta, I sold brick shit. And niggas can know that shit faking. And we even see this shit now with um with um with my homeboy Glock 9. You know what I'm saying? Like, regardless of what I say about nigga, like, you know what I'm saying? These niggas be having, like, when Kodak Black first came out, as a nigga in the street, there's no way that you can't move to this shit. Like, this shit is what the fuck it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? These niggas, they rocking whatever like that. But it's like, and that's another reason why. I tell niggas, man, like, right now is not a good time to be no fucking artist. Right now is not a good time to be an artist. Right now is a time that you probably want to be, but I'm going to be honest with you. If you're an artist and you're doing your thing, you probably, I'm telling you that it will be more lucrative for you to try to find a trade that you can do within the entertainment business. That's behind the scenes so you can be stacking up your money as you do your thing and as you watch what's going on with this industry. This new wave of fuck shit that's going on has made it to where a lot of niggas are really in the background just waiting out this fucking storm. Niggas are in the background. Wait, you got photographers. You got bloggers. You got motherfucking uh, uh, promoters, managers. Um, just anything, choreographers, uh, engineers, um, just anything that you can do that's behind the scenes, but inside of the industry, because it's like, you'll get, you'll, right now you'll get an artist that will be an A and R, you know what I'm saying? Like, let me, I'm a, let me sit back and wait until, you know what I'm saying, real music come back, because right now, you will die, you will die, because you'll put your money, you, you have to put your money into your craft. You have to put your money into promoting yourself and everything else. It's going to take money to push your project forward. This is why motherfuckers have issues with their labels. Because the label has to put money forth for your project to even be seen. This is why Cardi B had to make that move, which was a small fucking move, to put that 60000 towards radio. As I told you, everybody can't put that money towards radio. Because it wouldn't matter how much you put up. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't get what she gets because you have to first... They have to be able... To first be able to see you. And then it, it will matter where they see you at. If they don't see you and they don't know you. Then it don't matter where the fuck they see you at. You just a nobody that I see all the time. And some people will pick up on it like. Oh I see this nigga everywhere. But on a high platform. On a mass level. Like on the, on the biggest platform that you needed. You need to be seen and noticed. People need to know who you are. And then if they hear your shit everywhere. They're like alright. Oh, yeah, she blowed up. And that's why I'm going to fuck with it. We understand that people are not going to support you until they feel like everybody else supports you. This is the world. The world says, I can't show people that I fuck with you until everybody fucks with you. And this is the, the mentality of most people. You're not going to beat that. That's just what the fuck it is. Nobody's going to, uh, like, really, you know what I'm saying, pull you out the dirt and like, hey, man, listen to this nigga on a mass level. You'll get a couple niggas here and there, but what really matters is what's on the TV, what's on the radio, and what's on the motherfucking, you know what I'm saying, my phone. What What does Google keep saying? Like, and it's kind of subconsciously how this whole thing takes place because you can hear about the shit that 50 Cent is doing. Like, we, we heard about that. That deal he did with uh with uh vitamin water. We heard about that deal that that Dre did with uh the the headphones and shit like that. You weren't really keyed into it. You didn't really read the detail to it because it wasn't bullshit. When you hear about something, it's another thing about people. 
when you hear about something good that happens to a person, I right, fuck it. Something good happened, all good. What's the next bullshit? But if you, like with this Chief Key situation, if motherfucker would have said Chief Keep just landed another deal with E1, or he just signed a Def Jam, or he finna be on goddamn Love and Hip Hop. Well, if they find out he was on Love and Hip Hop, they might look into it because that's kind of a bad thing. Love and Hip Hop is the graveyard. You know what I'm saying? Once an artist goes to Love and Hip Hop, you know that their career is over. That's either the place where you go to die or you go to begin your career. If people already know you, that's where you go to die. If they don't know who the fuck you are, that's where you go to, you know what I'm saying, do the Kate Michelle, the Cardi B and shit like that. Or you doing the fucking Young Jock and everybody else. And that's just what the fuck it is. So if we heard about Chief Keep going to Love and Hip Hop, like, oh, let me see what the fuck going on with this shit. This nigga that really fell off. He got to do reality TV now. But if we hear about something good that's going on with the motherfucker, like, fuck that shit. So, this is, subconsciously, you, you hear those big things that happen for an artist, and that, and that even more let, allows you to know, I, yeah, that motherfucker's up, so it's okay for me to tell a motherfucker, man, you better go fuck with that nigga. But on a major scale, nobody's gonna fuck with you until everybody fucks with you. And that's just what that is. So, this goes back into the whole, this this the whole system. This the whole system, how it's played. You know what I'm saying? Chief Keith was just saved by the police because with three niggas going, and this would happen, once the police ran down on them, these niggas ran, and two of them niggas started shooting at the fucking police. Now, we can say a lot of shit about maybe they didn't know that that was police because they was in plain clothes and shit like that, but the bottom line is, if the police officers weren't there, I don't really think that niggas would have a problem killing a nigga. You know what I'm saying? The fact that niggas shot at somebody who spooked them lets me know that when them niggas got up in the house, they probably would have did something real weird to this nigga. You know what I'm saying? And we all know that it's, uh, it's natural for a rapper to get killed. It's natural for a rapper to get robbed. These things are supposed to happen. We heard about Joel Santana and and nobody else gives a fuck. You know what I'm saying? This nigga got a real, you know what I'm saying? This nigga's really going to prison about this shit for carrying a gun. If Chief Keith would have had a weapon, this would be the same. Like, but do you understand why a motherfucker would move around with a gun? You never know when these motherfuckers is coming to get something. If Chief Keith would have tried some slick, maybe niggas had the wrong information and thought that he had a whole bunch of, or maybe they saw a video where he was flexing with some money, like, we finna go get that shit. And it's a goddamn shame that niggas have a window into your house right from their fucking tracking device. They can say exactly what the fuck you have going on and niggas is coming to get that shit. But fuck all the dumb shit. The police just saved Chief Keith's life. Now, what are we saying here? What are we saying? Them niggas, because they arrested, like, I think one nigga got arrested and the two other niggas, I think they got away. I think two niggas might have got arrested and one nigga got away. What's, what, what's going to happen here? Like, if Chief keep calm, the court, or whatever the fuck take place, what are we saying? We can't on one hand be saying that the Dallas police are fucking racist, but then on the other hand, you got... We got to praise the police because the police have to save us from our goddamn self. What are we saying? So, of course, what we're saying is that, ah, yeah, uh, all police ain't bad, whatever like that. But that's not what the fuck we saying. We saying that, man, we don't need the police to be in all our fucking business and shit like that. We can police ourselves. What the fuck is up with these niggas? But what if the police would have just randomly seen these niggas in this high profile area and before they even got out the goddamn car to go hit the motherfucking house with the brick they would have just randomly stopped them and frisked them motherfuckers let's say the situation went the worst way where they actually got in and they killed Chief Keith let's go further down the road the niggas that killed XXX Tentacion what if the police would have randomly pulled them motherfuckers over just because they looked like some niggas? We had the same situation happen with the little, the little black boy that was riding with the old white lady. They randomly pulled him over because something didn't look right. What are we showing in this situation? We're showing if something don't look right, you better check it out because you're probably saving a nigga life. 
Because when you see us anywhere, we ain't up to no fucking good. Nine times out of ten, what we doing is nefarious. But that don't get broadcast. It doesn't get broadcast when we get pulled over and we do got the dope and the gun on us. It don't get broadcast when, you know what I'm saying, niggas go kick a nigga dough in. You know what I'm saying? The police just happen to be in a fucking area and they actually stop a murder from happening. I'm, I'm, understand what the fuck I'm saying. I cannot uphold no motherfucker wrong. And as long as situations like this take place, as I told you motherfuckers, if you will goddamn do a 30 day pause, a 30 day fast on crime, then we would have a leg to stand on. But as long as as we need to be protected from ourselves, we have no words to say to nobody for being too motherfucking gung-ho about getting us off the goddamn street. Because obviously, we don't give a fuck about no goddamn uh, reform. We don't give a fuck about none of that shit. When as soon as goddamn we get a chance, we're going to hit the, the, the richest nigga around us. So until this stop, that won't stop because it go hand in hand. Because in all actuality, they could have saved XXX Temptation if they would have been rougher on niggas that look like us. I'm being real with you. Because let me let me holler at you, big home. If it come down to a situation where the only motherfucker that can protect one of my loved ones who ain't doing shit wrong from a nigga who just can't get his shit together is a fucking police officer. I have no issue with I have no issue with police officers in general. My issue is this wrong shit that's going on. No matter what side it's on. Whether it's on that side or this fucking side. Wrong is goddamn wrong. And they need to be called down the goddamn middle. But what I'm saying is, my nigga... As long as you niggas is going after us, we got a situation that has not been resolved yet. We have a situation right now. Well, a white police officer just killed the innocent man in his home and they have planted weed inside there. We have not got this thing resolved yet. And before anything could take place, the only thing you niggas could think of is going robbing a nigga house because he made it out. So now, nigga, and now the only motherfucker that you can victimize is a nigga who cannot, you know, cannot protect himself. You know that Chief Keep, you know he can't have weapons. This is the same, to be honest, this is the same thing that NBA Youngboy is going through. Let me be honest with you. This is the same thing. You know that he can't kill you. You know he can't kill you because all eyes are on him. And I really find it really fucking it's fag to me it's, it's faggot shit to fuck with a nigga that can't do you what you can do him. I find that extremely faggoty. You need, like we we gonna have to, we gonna have to get some in order. We're gonna have to really put some down and say like dog If we can't stop ourselves from hurting ourselves, then we do need this type of police force. Because those police officers just saved Chief Keith's life. And I didn't even have him on the list to die in 2019. I guess I would have been wrong anyway because he would have died in 2018. Not by the hands of a fucking corrupt police officer, but by our hands. Do we gloss over this incident because it wasn't a white person that did it? Do we gloss over this because it wasn't a police officer that did it? Is it still not a loss of life just because a nigga takes it? Do we turn the blind eye to every nigga that dies by the hand of his brother because it doesn't fit our motherfucking narrative? I propose a 30-day fast on crime. I believe that is the only way we can justify whatever we have to do next. 
Beat Fast Podcast. I am Al Canseco. Make sure you hit the PayPal. Love.